attrition. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead. Like I'm gonna go ahead and call it. Act of attrition. attrition was the best of the five films. Okay. You've seen them all, so you. I have seen them Lucky all. Lucky you. <laughs> <laughs> Quote: It was a passion project of Seagal's. Oh. So there's passion involved. That's Along with starring, thing. he wrote the script. <laughs> the whole thing, he all by himself. Allegedly wrote the script. In one eight-hour stretch in a Starbucks. Where have you been? Drunk. He planned to direct. <laughs> But in the end, it was filmed. Uh, the dire- it was directed by somebody yeah. else. So. He did. He planned to direct it. He didn't, he didn't pull it off. I was too what, busy writing my funny. next script. What's funny? So call the Starbucks. Be like, I want another frappuccino. What's what's the guy's coffee order? Something from a barista. What is it? Okay, so he would be one of those guys who he he would order a black coffee in order to seem manly. But then, like that's a that. thing. Yeah, the other guy. Yeah, I like. You don't want to be a soy boy beta cup. I like my coffee black. I don't like any of that sugar or frou frou shit. But then you'd see him like secretly sipping on like a frappuccino. I like drink. my women. Like I like my coffee black, but lots of cream. <laughs> <laughs> we open on a scene in a warehouse where Seagal and some other dudes are cosplaying. They're, they're basically doing like airsoft stuff. Just like, we're dudes in tactical gear and we got guns. They were like special forces. Clearly it's just a warehouse. There's, they've done no set dressing whatsoever. <laughs> um, and it's, there's like that Middle Eastern kind of racist music where it's like, <laughs> The very stereotypical. So that's going on in the yeah. background. They're like, okay, it's Afghanistan or something. And they find a dead lady, tits out. What? So Again, tits out. Tits out, dead lady. Again. Boobs. Cold boobs don't count. We saw this last time. For all the lines that have been crossed in the name of justice. Three years later. So the story is Seagal special forces soldier has decided to quit and move to Thailand and live in just like a tiny village in Thailand and and they actually went to a village that's like on the river if you're waiting for apocalypse now like helicopters to come flying over and it's like okay we're really on a village on the side of a river he does acupuncture like people come to him and he does acupuncture <laughs> oh, the white guy he's really he's, good at he's teaching people aikido this dude comes in and they're not fight they like Oh, it's kind of like when you did the slap Dancing. thing. Yeah, it's like a dance. It's like, what is this? This isn't <laughs> fighting. It's like contact juggling or something. I'm like, what is this? In the middle of that, a, a giant butterfly lands on his hand and doesn't leave because he's a butterfly whisperer. He's just like, well, he he's drinks good so at much everything. Pepsi, the sugar comes out through his pores. Uh, oh, by the way, his name is Axe. Axe. The acupuncturist. <laughs> um, he's, uh, he's doing Buddhism and like telling hot girls about buddhism right and then it'll cut to him like doing elaborate calligraphy mm-hmm. like chi- like large chinese characters or whatever which is clearly not him in thailand <laughs> yeah i was like i don't know what the thai alphabet's like but it's very different this, this feels chinese to me and then someone will come over and be like let's have chai he does chiropractic <laughs> oh my back's hard i'm come just gonna in. i'll work break on it. your back let me break your back we have like um like the asian mystic he's the white mystic in the asian village <laughs> who knows acupuncture <laughs> and chinese calligraphy he and just has like three like, encyclopedias yeah, and he's like, like oh yeah you like? <laughs> cannot see everyone at the same time right he's coming soon okay Please wait, everybody. Don't worry, don't worry. He's gonna see every single of you. Uh, at one point, a little kid runs in. It's like, Axe, Axe, we need help. My dad is gonna kill himself. So he's the suicide hotline man for the, <laughs> the little village. And he runs and the dad is holding a knife to his own throat. He going to kill himself. You take me to him. You take me to him. I help you, okay? Kill me. I give you my life so you can live for him. We're like, just what is this day, plot? He's just a story. general village problem solver. Yeah. yeah. He's also the volunteer firefighter yep. brigade. I get cats down from trees. So ultimately, the plot is a girl from the village is kidnapped. There are like human traffickers that run all kinds of bad drugs and uh, human trafficking and gambling and all this stuff. And he has to get his crew of soldiers back together 
to go save the girl. And they do the big like heist at the end to go save the girl and so kill like all the bad guys. Iron Eagle, but on foot. Sure. How long into the hour and 25 minute film does he get the crew back together? There's a, there's a clear moment where it's like, they show their names on screen. It shows like where it's they like are and it's Ocean's like- Ocean's Eleven sort of thing? Yeah, it's, it's trying to feel like that. Okay. They, it shows what they're doing now and it'll show on screen their name, like Scarecrow. Three quarters of the movie is spent doing that. So you're, like, so you're spending most of the film assembling the team. Yeah. I feel like they, they take like five minutes. But when does it happen? 50 oh. minutes in. That's like yeah. exactly right. Wow. Yeah, I would say because I then have, you have um, to like wrap it up in like the last 30. Also, some of that's credits. I have the team <laughs> actually, <laughs> the team actually is finally together, ready to go 56 minutes in. And then oh, he okay. only goes to like get the team at like 50. Yeah. <laughs> so it's like, like three minutes for I was a soldier, three years later, and then he's just the medicine man for this village and teaching Aikido and doing that for like 45 minutes. Oh, <laughs> and then for like five. Go get me the biggest sack you can find and fill it full of down feathers and carry it to the top of the highest hill you can find and throw all the feathers everywhere in the wind. Oh, <laughs> and then for like God. 15 minutes. That's a real character building right it there. Is. And come back a week later and find every feather. Put it back in the bag and bring me the bag. But I will say it is intercut with the bad guys. The bad guys just like they run a casino, but they all there's like gambling, there's strippers, there's human trafficking, there's drugs, all this kind of stuff. And oh, they're real diversified. Very diversified, yes. It then hints at the the girl who's kidnapped is magical. Oh, she has magic powers. What which the is, fuck? Which is in the synopsis. It's like a woman with magic powers goes missing. Steven Seagal rescues her. I was like, all right. And it's just like, she's just kidnapped. You know, does she have magic powers? What is this? And it's hinted at for like one minute. Well, in what way is she special? When she was a baby, I noticed certain gifts. At her words, rains come down from her hand. Light can heal. The big bad like can't go in the sunlight anymore for some reason. Vampires. Vampires. But he's not a vampire in any way. Yeah. Yeah. It's just like he's oh, just he cursed. can't. I he's have cursed. Too much Asian D. curse. Yeah. As powerful as Q Mom is, he is cursed with a strange sickness. He can no longer walk in the sun. He has to live in the fortress that he's built for himself. If he has her in, locked up in his casino, it heals him. So now he can go out in the sun. That's it. We kind of talk about that at some point, and it's never again really discussed that she's magical. Ah. Uh, she appears to Seagal in a dream. Psychic. Astral projection. She's like projecting psychically into his dream and is like dancing and like talking to him. Topless. I am nothing. I am <laughs> she yeah. appears topless I mean, I in his dream. dream. He's having so. a wet dream. After he decides to quit being a soldier, it shows him like in a cave with very, very long hair but in like silhouette, so it's definitely not him. <laughs> and then he does a voiceover about how the world is bad now because everyone has bad morals, unlike him, and he has the best morals. By the way, he's been investigated for human trafficking in real life. Seagal? Yes. Wow, how oh, fun. Yeah. Will we talk about this next episode? It, it, so he gives this like very uh, Neil Breen monologue about how he's gonna rid the world of evil again. This is this running team, he's the best. The corruption of our world is diluvian in proportions. In places like Mongla, where the wicked run rampant, human trafficking trade is estimated at $32 billion per annum. The direction of this is like great. It looks good. It looks like a movie. Wow. The director was trying a lot. And like <laughs> they are really in this like river village. And if it wasn't Steven Seagal, an Asian actor, who's being the, the magical medicine man, this would be like, oh, an okay movie. Shockingly. And there's a cool part where um the the big bad he's shaking down a guy who like owes him money, and he's like feeding fish in like a koi pond or something, and then you see the like thing of fish food has a name on it. <laughs> I'm like oh that's somebody killed. And I was like oh that's like an okay detail. But then it shows like reverse like time reverses. We see like shots that are backwards. It's like we're in Tenet all of a sudden, 
where we trace the fish food back to like, then it's ground up and it's like, oh, a leg comes out. And then it goes <laughs> to like a person you get smashed in the head and like blood flies on the wall, but it looks like Chinese calligraphy. And the it's like, well, this is a very, oh, very wow. good. Looks like a movie, unlike I think all of the others, which looked like they were shot on TV on a, they had 40 seconds to set up the shot. Wow. This hallway is too empty. Sprinkle some trash yes. around. The bad guy at one point, he's in his office and he's punching a punching bag. And then there's like blood on his hands. And what is this blood from? He's punching a punching bag. And then there's blood coming out. And then he unzips the punching bag and there's a dude in it. And he like tumbles out. It's <laughs> no, like, no, like no, that's, that's a good gag. Yeah, that's a good gag. It was raining sometimes and they're outside. I'm like, wow, you guys are trying. This is a thing. <laughs> I'm kind of impressed a little bit. The bad part is the last, the, the heist at the end when they go save the girl is terrible. It's so oh. bad. Uh, he snaps a neck, but for good. Her neck, so I'm just gonna see if I can relieve this in here a little bit. <laughs> Real twist on that. Interesting. We will, we'll go together. Why you never got to learn? <laughs> I think he just liked me more than he liked too. I will allow you to live. You see, the mind is infinite. So you're telling me that you can't read English, but you can speak and read an entirely different language? Uh, I can read it, I can't speak it. How can you read something you can't speak? It doesn't make any sense. I don't know, the mystery, the magic. The mind is infinite, but the body is finite. At some point they come to him and they're like, uh, for the last two years, girls from this village have been going missing. You know, the movie started with Seagal three years later, and now you're like, for two years, girls have been going missing from our tiny village. It's like, uh, are you sure you he's not that guy? Maybe um, it's like a, call out to like his real self. Yeah, you know how they say that The Shining is Kubrick's apology for faking the moon landing? Oh, Maybe this is his Steven Seagal's apology. Seagal. for apology. locking a woman in his basement in Louisiana? Why yeah. would The Shining Yikes, be what? an apology for the faking the moon you have to watch the But I could introduce it to his mama and you could ask her. You have to watch the documentary Room 237. It's pretty good. <laughs> okay. It's about all these different theories about what the movie The Shining actually means. I thought it was about flashlights, is that not right? I thought no. it was about... It's not about flashlights. Early on, there's several, in the first 50 minutes, there's several like play fights, because it's like, we don't have a heist until the end. So it'll be like, Seagal is doing his, I'm teaching, but they'll do like a sparring match or something. He has a sparring match with a dude, and then at the end of it, the dude is like, by the way, here, and he pulls a business card out of like his karate uniform or whatever, and gives him a business card, and like, come to my blues karaoke bar. Oh like, no! What? In like, the middle of like... Yeah, they're in this like river village. You're like in like the middle of fucking nowhere in Thailand, a village of like 80 people. And he's like, come to my blues karaoke bar. I'm like, where? Like, what? <laughs> Doesn't come up again. Chimmang Karaoke Club. Is that as exciting as it sounds? Maybe more so. Come visit. We are the best blues club in town. Yeah, I'm the only one. Oh. Until, Until it does in the end credits. <laughs> the girl's kidnapped, the guy, the dad comes to him, I need your help. And so he assembles the crew. The crew is Scarecrow, Yin Ying, Infidel, and Hollywood. I can like- oh God, use... I know each one of these characters I know. They tell me God about Scarecrow, it. who's Scarecrow? Honestly, I don't remember. Skitty. I just remember They're one skitty. of them. They're skinny. They're skinny. Scarecrow's skinny. They're okay. probably like kind of Southern American. Infidel. Clearly yeah, that person. Middle Eastern middle person. Eastern. Middle Eastern guy. They're planning the heist. We're gonna go into mm -hmm. this casino. Again, it's like tiny river village. Suddenly we're going to this like giant casino where like every floor is like a different type of debauchery. Oh. It's like, where it's is like this? It's like a reverse Dante's Inferno. Yeah, oh, a little bit. Fun. There's like a strip club level. There's like just like a regular club level. And then there's like a level with like champagne rooms. And like, well, that's the heroin room. That's the human trafficking room. He tells Yin Yang, dress like someone sexy. 
So we get her infiltration to figure out the security. There's three different levels of like security and to get into like a higher one, they just put like ribbons on their wrist. Just like Hobby Lobby ribbons. Okay. <laughs> just okay. a ribbon. To just replicate. white, black, and red. And she I figures out whichever time. one's the highest thing was red. And she just gets some of those. And I was like, you could have gone to Hobby Lobby for this. Like, yeah, this got it for like 99 cents, get a yeah. coupon. But they're acting like, oh, this is a great plan. Like, oh, I got some ribbon. Gonna try to go in with a soft insertion. <laughs> and if you hear me or him say, go hard, it's gonna get hard. <laughs> soft insertion is the plan. I'm gonna try to go in with a soft insertion. Cool, calm. And if you hear me or him say, go hard, it's gonna get hard. I hope you don't think I've gone that soft. If you go Someone, in while you're soft. And then you go hard. It's, you prolong the experience. It gets hard. Then someone asks, what is our exit strategy? Well, we're gonna go in like shadows, go out like thunder. And I'd be like, no, but like, really, what's the plan? Well, what the I, I need to know what mean? the plan yeah. is. Go in like shadows, in like go shadows, out. Out like th Sykes is trained to be a ghost, a shadow. I feel like you should I was go like, well, okay, well, first like off, shadows. shadows and thunder. No, no, no. Thunder and lightning. <laughs> You're mixing your metaphors here. I mean, don't you want to like go in and out without being noticed? Go in I mean, like shadows. Ideal. Come no, out I think once like you're shadows. in and you get what you want, it doesn't matter how you exit as long as you've got what you want and you're leaving. Once you've gotten your soft insertion, you're good. You know, yeah. You're ready for whatever. <laughs> we have to get hard after that. Go in like Umbra, come out like Penumbra. <laughs> <laughs> go in like milk, come out like cheese. Are we, uh, <laughs> well, I mean, we're getting hard. No way. <laughs> this is the woman we're looking for, early 20s. She's about a B cup in my dreams. Uh, she's almost certainly being held in the basement of the club, heavily guarded. So you think, hey, oh, we're going to break into this casino, the den, uh, the pleasure den. Just write the, right we the. We snap every we neck. We snap lots of necks. <sighs> We sneak in. Way is. What weapons are we using? Hands, knives. Hand Hands, knives, Nunchucks. swords. Garrett, Garrett wires? Garrot? Garrot swords, Garrot. for Garrot. sure. Nunchucks. Right, for our silent entry. Here's what they actually do. They get all the way to the champagne room level because they have the red ribbons. So absolutely no effort. They get to that level. Then they walk into the variety of human trafficking room, the heroin room, and they pull out guns and just shoot people in the face. Anyway, I started blasting. Bam, bam. Okay, well, they're starting the out okay. like thunder. Right, there was no shadows. It was just... <laughs> just all thunder. And they just shoot every henchman in the face. Like, no <laughs> tension or all... Like, not even fun fights, really. <laughs> Go help the others. What? Mop. I feel just... like this is... This really reflects on Seagal as a lover. I imagine... He talks a big game. <laughs> he talks a big game. He's like, babe, I am going to do this and And then that. he shoots her in the face and leaves. <laughs> oh my god, right? That's surreal. <laughs> what? That's it, baby. <laughs> That's it. I'm out like that. That's all I got for you tonight. I'm like that. <laughs> so once they uh, shoot a lot of people, and then, of course, then it starts to get into the karate, Aikido, whatever. Yeah. Repeatedly, there are parts where they like punch someone in the chest, and there will be blood effect splatters. Like he punched through someone. Yeah, there's a punch in the chest, and like blood splatters everywhere. <laughs> so, and these are all just digital effects added later, and they look terrible. Full full side. Yeah! Yeah! So then the whole crew sits down over a, a big table to eat a meal, and Seagal's at the head of the table, and it delivers a monologue about, We're gonna save the world from all these evil people. If we can devote every last breath we have, every last breath. The world used to be great, but now it's going to shit because the morals are bad. I was like, yeah, the world used to be great, like in like World War II. Like, when was it great? <laughs> <laughs> These guys are all just like, can we eat now? Like, Make where, the world great right again, you know? Yeah. The traditions, the values, the ethics, the morals given to us by our fathers, they are almost literally gone. Asian martial arts have gone all over the world, but it is at risk of a deep, dark sickness 
For there are those who have sought to use their strength and knowledge, not for the greater good, but for their own evil ambitions. So after defeating the human traffickers, Steve is giving a monologue about how Kung Fu is being abused by bad people, like it's sacred knowledge, like it's the Force and it makes you a Jedi, but the bad guys are using the Force to do evil, and they're like spreading it across the world to like the, the not the not Asia parts of the world. Now, I'm no expert in human trafficking, but I don't think human traffickers are relying totally on like Aikido to, for like power. I think mostly they use guns. But I can think of one particular bad guy who's been accused of human trafficking and sexual assault, who's a white guy who took that knowledge of like Kung Fu and then took it to not Asia and used that for evil and it worked somehow and he got power from it and he used that power to sexually assault lots of women. You had a rape allegation against you and I wonder how you deal with all yeah. that. For out for justice, I guess he had like a disarm where you were gonna get the shotgun away from him but he didn't like that. So yeah. then, you know, it went into him yeah. basically trying to rip your arm out its socket. <laughs> he didn't like the idea of the bad guy disarming him. Sure. So yeah, he's always been invincible for the most part in movies, so... Yeah. Why? Why? You are one of those idiots who learn Kung Fu. In Kazakhstan, I think, I was somewhere crazy in the world the other day, and there was a big Kyokushin Kai, how do you say in English, like... Um, a gathering or a convention? Well, yeah, convention, yeah, something okay. like that. All the old senpai, all the old, you know, Kyokushin Kai masters yeah. were there, and they saw me come in, this was like chilling, and they, oh, you know, he's here, he's here. And they made me come and sit with the other masters and they introduced me as their senpai. Wow. You know, there's no greater evil than those who harm children. I love Vladimir Putin and I think he's a wonderful human being, a great world leader, a real man. And I think he loves the martial arts. Uh, the first time I went to his home many years ago, he had a life-size statue of Kano Jigoro. <laughs> wow, the founder of Judo. Incredible. <laughs> and over the credits, Steven Seagal is at the Blues Karaoke Club. <laughs> With the whole cast, and this is like a giant theater situation, and like all, these, all the dead people? Not the daddies, I don't oh, think. Okay. Not the maybe, daddies? Maybe, I'm not sure. And they're all doing like choreographed dancing, and then you cut to Seagal on stage sitting down, playing guitar, <laughs> and he is singing barbecue. Wow. Cool barbecue. baby, it's cool old like a polar bear. He's singing that song. <laughs> Overall, best of the five for the, the director was actually trying. It looks like a film. And I think if you would have cast anyone other than Steven Seagal, okay, okay, film. Ready for a prank run. But they cast Whoa. Steven Seagal probably to get money and then. It's funny how that gets you money. With this, I'm ready for everything. Death by a thousand cuts. I see you keep these blades very sharp. Once a month, all heavies die hard. The many you could not save before. You are the only one. But what, what have we learned today about Steven Seagal? He's the best at everything. He's that, the best at everything. That can be done. If there's a thing that can be done, don't fucking Acupuncture. bother because Steven Seagal's already better at it. Chiropractory. Healing your kidneys somehow. <laughs> he's Tyler Durden. Sword play, he's Tyler Durden. It'd be funny Sniping. if you tricked him. I'm the best at sucking my own dick. And he'd be like, I'm better at sucking your dick. I haven't <laughs> convinced him. This reminds me of a, a Craigslist post I made once. You made a Craigslist post. And when I was in college, I made a Craigslist post. I made two. I had a, a control one for science. Uh, I made a control post. It was just, I'm a 20-year-old college girl looking for dudes, whatever, right? And then I made one. I am Asian girl. I am 19. I'm a virgin. And I'm afraid of sex because I'm tiny and Asian. So I'm looking for a man with a tiny penis to take my virginity. <laughs> oh my god! Please send pictures of tiny penis. <laughs> wow. Here's the thing. Same dudes are replying to both. Dude will send a picture to regular college girl. Where what are you doing to make the make it look good? You know, it's you have a remote next to it. Yeah, there you go. Small yeah. things. You yeah. buy you buy little tomatoes, but little cherry tomatoes. Yeah. 
And, and you, you line up like a... nine of them. Baby, I'm a beefsteak. Yeah. <laughs> you get the full chub. You've got like a guitar in the background, you know, something like that. And then to... Um, I don't do that well. No, I'm it really is my mo- or a films. Yes. Yeah. True fun films. On my coffee we're, table We're not with my talking dick. about... I'm not that. a huge expert in how well men make dick pics, I other than this incident. I could 15 years ago. make a video. Yeah. This is a control, control dick. Control dick, okay. okay you Show see? it to the camera. <laughs> <laughs> Regular college girl got that one, but um, Asian girl. Same dudes would send her pictures, but it was all like, they were getting their penises as small as possible. <laughs> just yeah. opening the fridge and standing yeah. in front of right. it for 10 minutes. And they're doing things like, you could tell in one they're like sucking the gut in, and the other ones are like, oh, get my gut out and get it in the way as much as I can. Oh, look how tiny it is. So I got like 40 dudes to brag about how small their dicks were. I was pretty... oh, that's impressive. I'm just, I'm just trying to help society. You know? Absolutely. I yeah. say we make a Craigslist post where we say, I'm super hot girl and I'm really into dudes with one eye. And see how many dudes we can get to stab one of their eyes. <laughs> cool. yeah, right? Yeah. I'm into that. Yeah, let's do let's it. Let's do it. You're just going to get a lot of uh, eye patch, eye guys. Oh, who, who's <laughs> that gonna, no, I have, need proof. You're going to have proof. people running wanna... out like the eye patch aisle at CVS. Just like, <laughs> you know, anymore. All of a sudden patches. we see like what an eye patch sold out of eye patches. You know who has one eye? Peter Falk. Oh my god. Oh, that's right. Columbo. He's dead. I know. So he's got what about, zero um, eyes. <laughs> oh. What about Steven Skull's dick pic? Can you tell me about that? You, you seem to be a dick pic expert. You think his pubes have a widow's well, peak? I don't know. Um, I'm curious. I feel like he'd be like one of those guys who try to show off that it's big, right? But so a lot of guys, they'll, you know, this is their dick. Mm-hmm. Interesting. Um, but they'll put it like in, ex- <laughs> <laughs> in an extreme close up. Not it's all blurry, big. just like you can't you, really you see it on much tablet, outside it's like nine of the pixels. picture. Yeah, and it's, it really is just a dick. Yeah, and or like something next to it to compare size. And he'll probably like the back. The background will be kind of messy. I feel like he probably doesn't have any dudes in general. Just don't have the same sense of like framing or the cleanliness mm. or like rule of thirds things yes. like that yeah. Interesting. yeah so like the background will be kind of messy um i feel like seagal would probably you'd see like his mall ninja shit mall ninja <laughs> shit in the background <laughs> he's comparing it to the throwing stars <laughs> i is feel he, like he would he, like take a picture from underneath that way oh, you can still under. get his face yeah, in yeah. oh the it's under a, over but, but it'd be kind of like a uh, and he's like still wearing that shirt, that yeah. that kind of shirt. That silk shirt, and yeah, he'll be kind of like grazing the, the top of his pubes. <laughs> yeah. Uh, <okay. laughs> yes. Interesting. I don't know. A lot of guys also will just still wear their shorts or pants, and then just just pull it out. Just pull somehow. it out, but they'll be like in bed. Like they could like wearing pants. In they bed. could pull down their whole. They could pants. pull down they their the whole off. thing and do like a. Are they going through the zipper? Clean and uncut. Yeah, they're going through Most the zipper the or like, or like the, the, the hole no in their balls? boxers or whatever. Yeah. No, you almost what? never get balls I in the picture. Balls. What? Unless no it's balls. a mirror shot. And yeah. those are pretty common too, but less common, I would Guys say, than just don't. from here to here, the dick Guys, and a remote or some shit. They don't understand. It's commonly a What don't we understand? They don't There's understand the appeal of balls. Yeah, balls are integral. Interesting. Interesting. Yeah, it's like trying to be like, oh, here's the sunset without... The clouds. horizon. You know? There's no yeah. clouds. Okay. It's just the yeah. sun. He's like, oh, this is just, this like just the ball see, of fire. You know, shaft of fire. Would wow, you rather get a balls only pick or a dick only pick? Oh, well, that's a good question. It depends on the dick and balls. There's owner. some weird looking yeah. dicks out there. <laughs> <laughs> it really so assume, depends. Assuming they're both and you know totally what? mediocre. Some of the weirdest dicks belong to the know. most unassuming of humans. Yeah. You're like, mm, well, I wasn't expecting that. And it's like, I. How many dick pics have you had sent to you? <laughs> Life, lifetime number. Oh, I don't know. You guys have a lot of expertise. I'm just uh, curious because it seems mine like... Mine doesn't count. There was no dick. Uh, no, was I no know. Dick. I think there's probably... <laughs> see, I... Mine was tasteful. Nice. It was all teased. I've had like, I don't know, probably like at least 15 maybe. 15? Yeah. I've seen hundreds. Yeah. <laughs> I've got um, zero. Um, ever seen most of the, pictures. like, I would say probably, like, s- five to seven of those dick pics are probably unsolicited, too. It's always off-putting when it's unsolicited. Yeah, it's like, whoa. How do, how should a man solicit the dick pic? 
I, they want to send you. If you want to send a woman a you dick pic, just ask. Pick. Just like, hey, is it all right? Like, I've got this sweet picture of my job. Send nudes. <laughs> so, you guys want to talk about another cigar film? Or you want to be done? We have we've... talked about four tonight, haven't yeah. we? Yeah. yeah that's I was good planning on doing eight. Tonight? <laughs> Oh boy. Because Bulkley was going to watch his own too. Oh, that's and right. And you were going to watch too. Yeah. I okay, I can still up. watch Chi Chinese. Oh, salesman. you only watched one? Yeah, you missed that. And we only talked about I guess we did. He, he only did one, didn't do us. Oh, oh, Lord. I, I guess I could watch it with him. I watched five. I well, you're you like. Have. I didn't watch. I watched those two that we watched that day, and I was like, I don't want to do that again. <laughs> those were the best ones. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> they were. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, those were rough. Yeah. I would say, I but still I think, will watch another. We can. I'd say so tomorrow. far, Glimmer Man is still the best of all of them. Yeah, for me. Glimmerman. Although you, we were, we were all in agreement Armin on that. Glimmerman. Gary Glitterman. Glitterman. <laughs> Glitterman is gl man of the glitter. Great, yeah. yeah. That's a that's a layered one. I don't you can't think get got. rid of glitter. That's a deep cut, that genius. It was your joke from the last video. Oh, did I say that? Gary Glitter, the, gl <laughs> the Gary Glitter biopic. Yeah. I'm repeating your own joke that I heard 14 times that no one else remembers. You guys don't have perfect memories of the conversations we I had don't. on camera like two weeks ago? Thank goodness. Not even of the things I said, apparently. And closing thoughts for this not ready for primetime quad feature. I just want Seagal to stop. Just make him stop. Uh, ready for primetime, yes or no? So, against the dark, no. No. Code of Honor? No, that was terrible. No. So the Steven Seagal's version of Fight Club, where he's Tyler Durden. <laughs> terrible. That's a no. Asian, uh, Asian Connection. Connection. Also terrible. Mm. I would, both of those need to take a, yeah. a moment. That one had a lot of filler. Yeah. Uh, Attrition is clearly the best of I think might be ready for a prime time. I think it might be interesting enough in terms of like, look at how many skills Steven Seagal has. <laughs> he's so good at everything. There's a woman who's magical. Uh, her magic power is she can appear topless in Steven Skull's dreams. That's <laughs> that is kind of interesting. In I the, would in like the, to maybe have that as a power. Yeah. Like, just in like, the, just baby, show up. You got that power. That's nice. Oh I'd like God. to convince people to do stuff. I think he was saying you have the power Venmo to appear me. topless in his dream. <laughs> yeah. Send me money. Yes. <laughs> maybe attrition is ready for prime Maybe. Time. It's a maybe. The others are all nose. I'll have to take your word for it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm definitely not watching any more students at all. Movies. I have the Rotten Tomatoes scores for all, all of our films. Oh. They don't, not a one of them has a critic score. Because so none so of critics actually watch these. But I do figure have, out what rank they go in. I have Rotten Tomatoes audience scores. What do you think's the worst? Okay, what what's the one where he sat were? down the whole time? Oh, um, Asian Connection? Asian, Asian Connection. Connection. That one sounds the worst. Yeah, that, that one's got terrible. a 22%. I'd say that's the worst. The title is so that's immemorable. That's gotta be, yeah, that's gotta be. I mean, Against the Dark was pretty bad. Pretty bad. There was, it looked like no, a TV movie. No, it was it looked mainly like a TV show pe live in one people setting. walking around a hospital. Okay. If I had have these numbers in front of me, I think I would say Against the Dark is the worst. I'm going to reveal to you, Against the Dark is last uh, okay. amongst these four at 11%. Yeah, that sounds wow. about right. It was That's pretty shit. low. It was quite shit. Asian Connection is at 19% is not the next one on the list. Attrition oh. is next at 17, which means of these four, the best critic or the best audience score is Code of Honor. It sounds no the goofiest. At 24%. It sounds the goofiest. No way. Yeah. That one was harder than mine. I've seen some big cocks. Shoot my <laughs> dick. Baby, I'm a beefsteak. No, you almost I, never get balls. I'd ravage that pussy. Because yeah. <laughs> that pussy is mine. I think men can do no wrong. Oh. Low fat desserts are such bullshit. I don't know, the last time you fucking chewed it all up with those teeth. Where have you been? Drunk. If we can devote every last breath we have. Soft insertion. Speaking of your body and my body and stiffness. And if you hear me or him say go hard, 
it's gonna get hard. He's trained to blend into any city, any terrain, and he's using those skills.